Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose xn is a sequence of positive real numbers, such that the limit as n approaches infinity of xn plus 1 over xn converts to a value less than 1. Then, the limit as n approaches infinity of xn converges to 0. Okay, now, first of all, what does this mean? Well, by definition of the limit of a sequence, this means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer capital N, such that for all N greater than or equal to capital N, the absolute value of this guy minus this guy is less than epsilon. Similarly, this means the following. It means the same thing as this, it's just instead we replace xn plus 1 over xn and L with xn and 0. Okay, now to start with the proof, since L is less than 1, certainly there is some real number between L and 1. And so let's pick some real number between L and 1 and call it R. Now, notice, since this is a sequence of positive real numbers, Certainly, this must be a sequence of positive real numbers, right? xn plus 1 over xn must be greater than 0 for all positive integers n. And if we recall, a property of limits tells us if every term in the sequence is positive, then the limit it converges to must be greater than or equal to 0. So L is greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, 0 is less than or equal to L, which is less than R is less than 1. So 0 is less than R is less than 1. Now, since we know that this sequence converges to L, this means we know that this first statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number R minus L. So if we take epsilon to be R minus L, we have that this statement is true. So there is some positive integer I'll call capital N1, such that for all n greater than or equal to capital N1, the absolute value of xn plus 1 over xn minus L is less than R minus L. And then, if we consider an arbitrary positive integer n greater than or equal to capital N1, well then, we know that xn plus 1 over xn minus L is less than or equal to the absolute value of xn plus 1 over xn minus L. This is a property that holds for any real number. But since n is greater than or equal to capital N1, we know that this guy is less than r minus L. And thus, we have that this guy is less than r minus l. So if we take this inequality and add l on both sides, we get that xn plus 1 over xn is less than r. And then we just take this inequality and multiply xn on both sides. We're going to get xn plus 1 is less than r xn. So we've shown that this inequality is true for any positive integer n greater than or equal to capital N1. Now, if we play around with this inequality, well, since capital N1 is greater than or equal to capital N1, certainly this inequality holds for capital N1. So this inequality is definitely true. But if we take n to be capital N1 plus 1, well, then we get that x capital N1 plus 2 is less than rx capital N1 plus 1. But then we know that x capital N1 plus 1 is less than rx capital N1. Well, if we take this first inequality and multiply r on both sides, since r is greater than 0, the sign of the inequality will remain the same. So we get this. And then r times r is just equal to r squared. So notice the pattern. We have plus 1, r to the power of 1, plus 2, 
we have r to the power of 2. So in general, this relationship tells us we should expect this inequality to be true for any positive integer k. And so we're going to prove that this is true for all positive integers k. And we're going to show that this is true using induction. So let's start with the base case where k is equal to 1. In this case, we're trying to show that x capital N1 plus 1 is less than r to the power of 1 x capital N1. So to show this, well, let me call this statement statement star. In star, we're going to take n to be capital N1. If we do that, we get x capital N1 plus 1 is less than rx capital N1. And we know that r is equal to r to the power of 1, and so we have shown exactly what we wanted to show. So this completes the base case. Now let's move on to the induction step. In the induction step, we give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer k, and we assume that this is true. The whole goal of the induction step at this point is to show that this is also true for k plus 1, which means we want to show that x capital N1 plus k plus 1 is less than r to the k plus 1, x capital N1. So, this is what we're trying to show. Now, since k is a positive integer, certainly capital N1 plus k is greater than or equal to capital N1. So in star, if we take n to be capital N1 plus k, we get x capital N1 plus k plus 1 is less than r x capital N1 plus k. And then if we take this inequality and multiply r on both sides, we get rx capital N1 plus k is less than r times r to the k x capital N1. Right? And r times r to the k is just equal to r to the k plus 1. And so this tells us that we have shown exactly what we wanted to show. So this completes the induction step. And because we've completed both the base case and the induction step, this closes the induction, and so we have proven exactly what we claimed. Because we ran out of room, let's move back up to the top. But before we move back to the top, let me just write some notes up here. Okay, now remember, the whole goal has been to show that the limit of our sequence xn converges to zero. And we are now in a position where we're ready to show this. And so to show that this is true, all we got to do is prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. The whole goal is to find some positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Now to start, since 0 is less than r is less than 1, it turns out the limit of r to the power of n as n approaches infinity is equal to 0. And what does this mean? Well, by definition of the limit of a sequence, this means the following. It means this. Now, since we know that this is true, this means we know that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number epsilon over x capital N1. So if we take epsilon to be 
epsilon over x capital N1, we have that this statement is true. So there is some positive integer I'll call capital N2, such that for all n greater than or equal to capital N2, the absolute value of r to the n minus 0 is less than epsilon over x capital N1. Now, remember, the whole goal has been to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Well, the claim is that capital N1 plus capital N2 will make this statement turn out true. So taking this positive integer to be capital N1 plus capital N2, we proceed to show that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer greater than or equal to capital N1 plus capital N2, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to capital N1 plus capital N2. I'll call it n. The whole goal from here is to show that this inequality is true. Now, since these guys are both positive integers, surely n is strictly greater than capital N1. Which means we should be able to write n in the form capital N1 plus k for some positive integer k. But then we can apply fact number two. Right? We know that this statement works for every positive integer. So in particular, it must work for the positive integer k that we have here. So taking k to be the k we have here, we have that x capital N1 plus k is less than r to the k x capital N1. And we know that n is equal to capital N1 plus k, so this is just equal to xn. And of course, xn is equal to the absolute value of xn minus 0. But then, since n is equal to capital N1 plus k, we can replace n here with capital N1 plus k. So we get that capital N1 plus k is greater than or equal to capital N1 plus capital N2. And therefore, k is greater than or equal to capital N2. So, since this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to capital N2, then in particular it must work for k. So taking n to be k, we have that the absolute value of r to the k minus 0 is less than epsilon over x capital N1. Now really, the absolute value of r to the k minus 0 is equal to r to the k. So this is just saying r to the k is less than epsilon over x capital N1. And now putting this all together, we see that the absolute value of xn minus 0 is less than r to the k x capital N1. But then, if we take this inequality and multiply x capital N1 on both sides, we get r to the k x capital N1 is less than epsilon over x capital N1 times x capital N1. Well, these two guys cancel out, and that's just equal to epsilon. And so we have that the absolute value of xn minus 0 is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show. And therefore, we have proven that this statement is true, which means the limit of xn as n approaches infinity is equal to 0. And that is exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.